Shalom, shalom, family. My name is Brother Netanyahu Ben Yasharal. My name is Brother Gedaliah Ben Yasharal. Shalom. Shalom, family. We want to welcome you to Yasharal Commonwealth Ministries, where our website is israelcommonwealthministries.org. Before we get started with our lesson, we'd like to have an opening scripture from Ach Gedaliah. Our opening scripture will be Exodus chapter 24, verses 5 through 8. Verse 5 reads, then he sent young men of the children of Yasharal, and they offered burnt offerings and sacrificed young bulls as peace offerings to Yahuwah. Moshe took half the blood and put it in basins, and half the blood he sprinkled on the altar. Then he took the book of the covenant and read it to the people, and they said, All that Yahuwah has said we will do and be obedient. Then Moshe took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, Behold, the blood of the covenant which Yahuwah has made with you according to all these laws. May the reading of the word of Yahuwah have a blessing in Yahushua's name. Hallelujah, Yahuwah. Hallelujah, Yahuwah, family. Uh, once again, welcome to Yahshua Commonwealth Ministries, where we are our Bible teaching ministry, to where we teach the word of Yahuwah, the creator, through the teachings of Yahushua, the almighty son, and we use, of course, Torah, or Tanakh, the law of the prophets, even with the second volume of the book that they call the New Testament, because it's all one conversation, basically, when it's done in perspective correctly. But what we want to share today is that I know I harp a lot on the law. And a lot of people think through teachings that the law is done away with. There's only one law that has been done away with, technically, and that's animal sacrifice. But everything else is still on the books. The royal law, Ten Commandments, the uh, yearly ceremonial Shabbats or the high feast days, laws, laws of judgment, because we still got to discern righteousness from unrighteousness, and the dietary law, what we eat, put in our temples, right? So out of the five pillars, animal sacrifice is the only one that is not being, being acknowledged right now because Yahusha is our sacrifice for redemption. Now, with that, I want you to understand that you need to worship Yahuwah, the king of hosts, and not the sacrifice. So when I was a Jesus worshiper, like most of you are still now, we worship Jesus. Jesus was the sacrifice. He was not the redeemer per se. Yahuwah was the redeemer. Yahusha came in line with the law <coughs> to symbolize the redemption for Yahuwah for us to be reconciled. What do I mean by that? So what the brother just read in the opening scripture is that everything is done by the purging of blood technically, right? But if you go to your book and you go to Leviticus uh, chapter 1, it talks about the burnt offerings. The purpose for the burnt offering is for an atonement. What is the blood of the Mashiach used for? In atonement. It is not used for worship him as a God. Right? So Yahusha is the true atonement used to reconcile us by his blood back to the Father. Because this is the process the Father set up back in the ancient days. And then if you go to Leviticus, the fourth chapter, verse uh, 23 to 25. You'll find out that there's a sin offering that needs to be made. So if the Mashiach was made a sin offering, that means that you have committed an act of sin against the law of Yahuwah, and now you have to have an atonement, bring forth a burnt offering, and you have to also bring forth blood. So that bulls and goats were used to just show you the schoolmaster will lead you to faith which is Yahusha's blood, that precious blood. But remember, brothers and sisters, worship Yahuwah and not the sacrifice. Though Yahusha is the ultimate sacrifice, we are not supposed to worship him like we worship Yahuwah, the creator. He is an instrument, a process used for giving us a bath. Let's look at it like that. Make it simple. Give us a bath, Yahushua, because we're dirty and we're filthy, and then present us as a chaste version to Yahuwah. Yahuwah, we're dirty, we're filthy. Give us the, the righteous washing that we need. Hey, I'm going to give it to you by burnt offerings and sin offerings to redeem you. So I ain't got to kill you. So that's the whole purpose of the Mashiach coming 
to be a sin offering and a burnt offering for us. An atonement for our sins, brothers and sisters. So the law, the death of Yahushua never destroyed the law of Yahuwah or his purpose. But we, through bad teachings, teachings of men who don't want to serve Yahuwah, have turned to worship the sacrifice, right? So what do God's demand? They demand you to sacrifice. Give your kids to Molech into the fire, basically, right? But Yahushua, he's not asking you to worship him. He said, worship the Father alone. He says, I'm just a servant like you are, right? Worship Yahuwah. Give him the glory because he set this whole program up. So our burnt offering is designed for an atonement. Our sin offering is designed for repentance. So this is where we're going to go with understanding worship Yahuwah and not the sacrifice. Right? Not taking anything away from the Almighty Son Yahushua because he is anointed as king and high priest. So don't worship Aaron. Worship Yahuwah because Aaron is doing the process of cleaning you up with the burnt sacrifice, the, the, the sin offering, the, the bread offering, the heave offering, etc. That's, that's the process. So stop letting everybody say the whole law was nailed to the stake in Colossians 2 and 14. It was not all nailed to the stake. The Bashiach said, I have not come to destroy the law. Why? Because he wasn't given the authority or the directions to destroy the whole law. He said, I come to represent the burnt offering and the sin offering because we polluted it so bad that we destroyed the understanding of it. Mm -hmm. That's what we did. So now, Yahuwah said, I got a better offering. I'm going to send my son and through his blood as an atonement, as a sin offering, will reconcile you back to me. So now, we got a lot of scriptures to go over. Please pay close attention. And we're going to run right through this for you. Hope you get the understanding that you need. I'm not here to convert you. I'm here to share this information with you. And we're going to get this done. Let's start in Psalms chapter 24. Let's worship <clears throat> the King of glory. Who is the King of glory? It's going to tell us here in Psalms 24. Ak, when you get there, go ahead. Verse 7. Lift up your heads, O gates. Lift up your doors. And the king of glory shall come in. Who is king of glory? Who is the king of glory? Yahuwah, strong, strong and mighty. Strong and mighty, right? Go ahead. Yahuwah, mighty in back. Lift up your heads, O gates. Lift up you doors. Uh -huh. And the king of glory shall then come in. Uh -huh. Who is king of glory? Uh -huh. Yahuwah of hope. Right? Yahuwah, strong and might, mighty. He is the king. Say lot. Hey, who is the king of glory? Yahuwah. Well, who is Yahuwah being the king of glory? He is Yahuwah. King of hosts, brothers and sisters. Who are we supposed to worship? Yahuwah, the King of hosts. Our glory, right? We're not supposed to worship the sacrifice. We're supposed to worship the Creator who gave us an opportunity for redemption through a process called animal sacrifice. So now we have to understand because our fathers blew it, the more rams and bulls they had, the more they figured that they could stand. But he said, I'm tired of this process because y'all just making a mockery of it. Now I'm going to give you my begotten son once and for all, as it says in Hebrews 10, because there was a body for the Mashiach to use to be the burnt offering and the sin offering or the atonement and the redemption from sin, right? Let's go a little further. Let's go to Psalms, the 96th chapter. So open up the gates for the king of glory. Who was this king of glory? Yahuwah of hosts, right? Worship Yahuwah of hosts and not the sacrifice, right? Psalms 96, verse 9, bro. Can you get there? Go ahead. Verse 9. Uh huh. Oh, worship Yahuwah in the ornaments, the talent and the kipper of holiness. Reverently fear before him all the earth. Wait a minute. Don't just come to Yahuwah any kind of way. Come to him the righteous way with the kipper covering your head and the talent your prayer shall. Right? If you don't know what that is, go back and look at when I pray to Yahuwah or pray with your head covered videos, right? It's important you understand this, brothers and sisters, to get back to the true creator. God is not the creator. God is Satan the devil who wants you to pollute the sacrifice to worship it because he wants you to honor him. Yahuwah said, this is a process to help you get back to me. Honor it. Don't worship it, right? Continue. Verse 2. Uh -huh. Sing to Yahuwah and bless his name. Uh -huh. Proclaim his salvation from day to day. Right. 
Sing to Yahor, profess his name, sing praise to him day to day. Go ahead, verse 4. Verse 4. Uh -huh. For Yahuwah is great and he, greatly to be praised. Right, Yahuwah is great and he is greatly to be praised. Go ahead. He alone is to be reverenced, but not the gods or Elohim. Hey, he alone is to be praised, not the gods, the Elohim. Because Yahuwah is not a God, nor is he an Elohim. But the gods who proclaim to have power is Satan the devil. Yeah, he got some authority from Yahuwah to walk to and fro up and down in the earth. To kill, steal, and destroy, but he's doing it so that the saints can be tested if they're going to serve you who or not. If you are a saint, then you know that Satan is God and you who is the creator, and you flee in God to come to Yahuwah. Brothers and sisters, continue, huh? Verse 5. Uh -huh. For all the gods or Elohims of the nations are idols, uh -huh. extreme and absolute nothings, but Yahuwah made the heavens. Wait a minute. So all the gods are idols. Jesus is an idol, brothers and sisters. He's on a cross, right? He's an idol. Stop worshiping the idols, right? Buddha is an idol. He's a fat man in a rock. He's an idol. The gods of the nations are idols. But the ultimate God is Satan the devil. So we got to understand this. Learn to worship Yahuwah and don't give in to the sacrifice the wrong way that you make it God and you only worship it as your Savior. Remember, Yahuwah is the Savior at the end of the day, brothers and sisters. Continue on. That was it. Let's go to Psalms 95 and let's read verse 6. Psalms 95, verse 6. Verse 6. Uh huh. Come, let us bow down and worship. What? Come, let us bow down and worship who? Yahuwah. Right? Go ahead. Let us kneel before you, O Yahuwah, our maker. Right. Let us kneel before Yahuwah, our maker, or our creator. Right. Let's go to Ecclesiastic. Right. Why should we bow down and kneel to Yahuwah, the creator? Because he has given us a duty to do. You have a duty to Yahuwah. What is your duty? Well, you don't know your duty because you've been taught the law is done away with. The commandments are no longer any good. So we got to figure out our duty again. So let's find out what our duty is to Yahuwah, the Creator, our Father, right? Ecclesiastes 12 and verse 13. Up when you get there, go ahead. Verse 13. Uh huh. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. At the end of the day, what's the whole matter? Reverence Yahuwah by observing or keeping his law. Uh huh. For this is the whole duty of man. See, if you have kept the whole duty of man, the duty of reverencing Yahuwah, then you will have not needed a sacrifice. That you said, now I'm going to worship the sacrifice instead of the creator, Yahuwah. Mm -hmm. Go back to your first love. The duty of Yahuwah is to reverence him and keep his commandments or his law. Mm -hmm. Worship Yahuwah and not the sacrifice, brothers and sisters. Yahusha HaMashiach is not to be worshipped like Yahuwah. He has been sent under the authority of Yahuwah to work his will in the earth to Adam's creation to bring it back to him by burnt offering, sin offering, heave offering, grain offering, etc. In the animal sacrifice, that's the only thing that we can say if you want to say nailed to the cross. No, it was the man that was nailed to the stake that's right. and the ordinance that was written against us was set aside because we have polluted it so bad it was destroying us anyway. Alright, let's go a little further. Let's go to first Yahukanah, which is first John chapter five. Because it all boils down with Yahuwah, our duty, our purpose, our duty with him is to reverence him and keep his commandments. Plain and simple, brothers and sisters. But if you don't like going into the Old Testament as they saw call it, or the Tanakh or Torah and the prophets, then you will never understand what the sacrifice was set up for is that you were still supposed to worship Yahuwah and not the sacrifice, right? First, Yahukanah 5, verse 3. Ah, can you get there? Go ahead. Verse 3. Uh-huh. For this is the love of Yahuwah. What's the love of Yahuwah? That we keep his law. That we keep his law. Because it's your duty. Your duty shows love, right? He says that those that keep my commandments, I will love them and show mercy. But those who don't, they hate me, they're going to be judged for it. Brothers and sisters, go ahead, huh? That we keep his law, and uh, his law is not grievous. Hey, that you keep his law, and his laws are not grievous, brothers and sisters. Stop saying that old law is too hard to do. 
that it's not hard to do. Your butt just don't want to be held accountable. That's all that is. But you're going to be held accountable at judgment about the things that you did in the seat of your intelligence that you used to sin with your body, that you refuse the burnt offering and the sin offering or the atonement made by blood by the Mashiach to redeem you back to Yahuwah because you let somebody tell you, oh, that old law is done away with. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. No, it ain't the old law. It is the word of Yahuwah that is purified that's telling you what you need to do mm -hmm. in order to be justified. Right? Let's go to Psalms 103. Psalms 103rd chapter, right? Again, if I move a little quick, I got a lot of material to cover. I got a short amount of time to get it done. Ox, I co tie, but the best part about it is there's a pause button, right? So you can go back and you can review the conversation with the scriptures that we're speaking through the Hakadesh Ruach, mm -hmm. what you would call the Holy Spirit, which we know right now in this form is Torah, right? So Psalms 103. Verse 17. Can you get that? Go ahead. Verse 17. Uh-huh. But your mercy, O Yahuwah, is upon those who reverence you from everlasting to everlasting, and your righteousness is with the children's children. Uh-huh. Of those who keep your covenant and remember your appointed commands or your laws, statutes, judgments, ordinances, and testimony, to do and obey them. Wait a minute. So his mercy is with those who reverence him. Remember Ecclesiastes 12, 13? Reverence Yahuwah and keep his commandment for it's the whole duty of man. At the end of the day, or let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter, right? So you got a job. Keep the law. If you would keep the law, you wouldn't have needed a sacrifice. But because you wouldn't keep the law and the wages of sin is death, according to Romans 6 and 23, then you needed a sacrifice to help you. A, a process of redemption is what it was, right? Continue. Uh, Verse 19. Go ahead. You, O Yahuwah, have prepared your throne in Shema, but your kingdom rules over all the world. Wait a minute. So Yahushua's throne is going to be on earth. Right now he's sitting at the right hand of Yahuwah at Yahuwah's throne. So who's the ultimate power to worship and glorify? Yahuwah. Oh, come, let us bow down and worship Yahuwah, not the sacrifice. The Son tells us, don't worship me, worship the Father. Don't worship me, worship the Father, right? Go ahead, I. Right? Verse 20. Uh -huh. Bless Yahuwah, you his mouth, uh -huh. mighty in strength to es execute his command, listening to the sound of his word. Right. Even if the holy Malachites are humble and contrary and bow down to Yahuwah and worship him by keeping his commandment, what makes you think that you, you don't have to? Right? They're mightier, great in power and stature than us. And they humble themselves. They tremble at Yahuwah's voice. But you say, no, nah, I'm not going to fear God. Yeah, don't fear God. Hate God. Reverence Yahuwah, brothers and sisters, and let his fear bring you to correction. His reverence bring you to justice. Go ahead. Uh, Verse 21. Uh -huh. Bless Yahuwah, you multitude of his ministers who do his will. Bless Yahuwah, all his works, all that he has made, in all places in his realm. Bless Yahuwah, O oh, our soul. Uh, bless Yahuwah, O oh, our souls. With all our body, with all our essence, learn to bless Yahuwah. See, we in the old text, right? They say, it's, oh, it's done away with. But here's the purifying of the glory of the creator, Yahuwah, telling you everything. But because you wouldn't listen, and you start to go contrary, you sin, start worshiping the sacrifice. All wrong. We don't know what happened to Moshe. Make us gods. And we all say they brought us out of Egypt. Mm -hmm. He said, give me your earrings and your gold. And they made a calf. Right? What did they do with the calf? They, they, they made burnt offerings to it and, and stuff. But Yahuwah was displeased with it because that wasn't his order. Right? So now you need an offering of redemption because you sinned before Yahuwah, basically. He says, don't make a God, don't bow down to a God. That's what they did. So now, people got to die. Blood got to be shed, technically, right? Let's go a little further, right? Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Let's find out what the sacrifice was all about. Why Yahushua gave his life up as the burnt offering and the sin offering, who was the grain offering that he said, I am the bread of life that came down from Shammah. Right? 
that bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, but I'm that true bread that the Father is making an offering with, with the burnt offerings and the sin offerings. See, if you don't go back and read it to understand it, then you would not understand the purpose why the Mashiach was manifested to, to take away the, the, the sin created by the devil, by God, who started in the garden, right? Mm -hmm. What I say we're going? 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. Okay, when you get that out, go ahead. Verse 7. Verse 7. Therefore, purge out the old left. Purge out the old teachings of the hypocrisies of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Go ahead. That you may be a new batch. That you may be created with a new spirit in your mind. Since you are unleavened. Since you're supposed to be unleavened. See, what does leavening do? It rises. Right? Unleavened is pure. There's no additive into it. So the word of Yahuwah being pure, we were not supposed to add leavening to his word, which the churches, the preachers, the ministers have done through God worship. They just add stuff all into the word of Yahuwah and blew it out of proportion. So now instead of worshiping Yahuwah, the king of hosts, they worship the sacrifice. We ain't supposed to do that, brothers and sisters. Romans 3, right? Romans chapter. We finish, we finish, we finish that for me. Right? Says, but truly Yahushua Passover was sacrificed for us. Oh, so don't worship Yahushua, our Passover sacrifice that was sent to show us how to come back to Yahuwah by his blood of washing. Remember, Yahuwah, we dirty. Give us a bath. Right. Well, I'm going to send my servant, Yahushua. He will wash you clean and present you to me as a chaste version that I may be reconciled to you from your filth. So, remember, once you come to the knowledge of the truth, all your past sins are wiped away because you're given a clean slate. Don't go and sin no more. Right? Now let's go to Romans, the third chapter. And let's pick it up at verse 19. Because remember, Yahushua is our atonement sacrifice. We needed something to redeem us because the bloods of bulls and goats could not take away your sins. Yahuwah wasn't looking at it for that purpose. So he's not going to acknowledge it forever. But he will acknowledge what he set up in righteousness that was manifested away from the law. He didn't need the law to set up this atonement. So we say, well, because the law is done away with, we got this new atonement, let's worship this new atonement now. No, just like you were supposed to worship the old atonement, don't worship the new atonement. Use it as the process of redemption that Yahuwah has set or established for you to come back to him. Mm -hmm. That's what this atonement is teaching you, right? Romans 3, verse 19. Oh, can you get there? Go ahead. Verse 19. Uh -huh. Now we know that as long as the law is preached, they who are under the law will preach it, uh -huh. so that every mouth will be silenced, and all the world may become under the judgment of Yahuwah. Right, the whole world under the judgment. Well, I don't want to be judged. Why not? Because I don't want to keep that law to be judged. Well, you can't do away with the law because it's here. But now, because you're doing away with the law, you need an atonement. You need a sacrifice. What did Yahuwah put in place? The Almighty Son to represent. The Almighty Son to represent mm -hmm. the burnt offering, sin offering, grain offering, etc. for your redemption process to be turned back to Yahuwah the Creator. Worship Yahuwah, not the sacrifice. Right. Go ahead. Uh, Verse 20. Uh -huh. Because anyone who does anything outside of the law will not be justified before him. Uh -huh. For through the law comes full knowledge of sin. Hey, Yahushua says, think not that I have come to destroy the law. I have not come to destroy, but to establish, to be in line with the law. Right? Except for we know that the animal sacrifice was going to have to be put on waivers or set to the back burner because now he represents the perfect sacrifice to Yahuwah. Continue. Uh -huh. 21. Uh -huh. Yet now has the righteousness of Yahuwah been manifested apart from the law? Uh -huh. It was testified to by the law and the prophets. If you want to find the coming of the Mashiach, go back to the law and the prophets and they will tell you about him coming, what his purpose was. Go ahead. 22. Uh -huh. Namely, the righteousness of Yahuwah by the faith of anointed to all and upon all of those who believe but there is no difference. Uh -huh. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of Yahuwah. Go ahead. Being freely justified by his forgiveness through the redemption or salvation that is through Yahushua Mashiach. Wait a minute. Now redemption is through the blood and the sacrifice of Yahushua Mashiach unto Yahuwah. 
He's pleased with this process now. He wasn't pleased with the animal sacrifice process because our father had the opportunity to go into the bin, the bin of the, of, of where the cattle was, mm -hmm. to bring out a bull or a goat or a sheep and sin and then offer it for atonement. Uh -uh. You can't bring Yahusha down from Shema or eternity and say, hey, die for me again because I messed up on purpose. Uh -uh. It ain't happening. So the righteousness is manifested without the law, brothers and sisters, but it was told how it was going to come in the law. But you say the law is done away with, I'm not going to keep the law, I'm going to worship and sacrifice, and I'm going to sin as often as I can, when I can, how I will, what I like. Because you, your butt, just don't want to be holy to Yahuwah. You want to be holy to crap. That's what it is. Figure it out. Start doing what is righteous. Learn the way of truth. And deal with your creator. Because if not, he going to surely deal with you. Because you love worship and the sacrifice. And not the king of glory, Yahuwah of hosts. Go ahead. 24 again. Uh -huh. Being freely justified by his forgiveness through the redemption or salvation that is through Yahushua Mashiach, whom Yahuwah set forth as a sacrifice of atonement by his own blood through the faith to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of Yahuwah. Hey, Yahuwah has set forth an, an ultimate sacrifice once and for all, right? Mm -hmm. Hebrews 10. Right? Because there's a remembrance through those old sacrifices of sin. And your mind has not been renewed because you kept doing the old sins, brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. Now there's one offering once and for all through the body and the blood of the Mashiach as a burnt offering, sin offering, grain offering, an offering of atonement for redemption. Don't worship the sacrifice. Use the process of the sacrifice to be cleansed to worship Yahuwah. Mm -hmm. King of hosts, brothers and sisters. One more verse, verse uh, 31. Because we got to establish something. If does faith make the law null and void? Heck no. Why? Verse 31. Are we then doing away with the law through the faith? By no means. Rather, we establish the law. Wait, what laws are we establishing? The royal law, the Ten Commandments, the ceremonial Shabbats, the, the feast days, judgment and dietary law. We establishing these laws, brothers and sisters. We can no longer establish animal sacrifice because Yahushua came and pushed it out of the way by what you say, nailing to the cross. He didn't nail all five laws to the cross. He only nailed one law to the stake. And that was symbolically the animal sacrifice for him being the ultimate sacrifice once and for all. Mm -hmm. Once and for all. Not multiple sins and multiple deaths once for all, brothers and sisters. Now, let's go to 1 Yachina, which is 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2, 1 Yachina chapter 2. And let's pick it up at verse 1. When you get the ark, go ahead. Verse 1. My little children, I write these things to you so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father... Yahushua Mashiach, the righteous. Hey, we have a mediator. We have someone that said, Father, I was in that flesh. And Bobby, he's really trying hard. He's going to get it right. But Kevin ain't trying hard enough. He's not going to get it right. So I understand you want to destroy Kevin, but let me speak on behalf of Bobby because Bobby is trying to reach out to you for salvation. Let me wash him. Give me permission to wash him and bring him to you. Not destroy him because he want to worship God, because he want to be filthy, because he want to do his own pleasure. Yahushua is our mediator. He's our advocate. He's our propitiation, brothers and sisters. He's our atonement. Mm -hmm. Don't worship the process. Worship the person that set up the process to redeem you back to him. Go ahead, huh? Verse 2. Uh -huh. And he is the sacrifice of atonement for our sins, and not for ours only but also for the sins of the whole world. The whole world can come to Yahuwah through Yahusha if they understand the process. But we're being told, don't believe in the process, just worship it, and that's not the case. Worship the creator Yahuwah and honor the sacrifice of redemption back to Yahuwah. Go ahead. Verse 3. Uh -huh. Now by this we do know that we know him if we keep his law. If we keep his laws, go ahead. 
He who says, I know him, but does not keep his law, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. Uh -huh. But whoever keeps his law, in him truly is the love of Yahuwah perfected. By this we know that we are in him. Wait, don't say I love Yahuwah through Yahushua and you unlawful. You know what I'm saying? It don't work that way. Because you said his law is grievous, and it's not. You just choose not to do it. Mm -hmm. Because somebody got in your ear and said, you got to do all that. You say, oh, that's cool then. No, it's not cool. It's almost deadly. It is deadly right. if you don't figure it out, right? That what you're dealing with is going to get you killed because it is not tied into the blood. It is not tied into the atonement. It is not tied into the sin offering, which you are not truly in tied into Yahusha's teachings and his action for Yahuwah to be a Sacrifice atonement once and for all, right? Let's go to first Kessel. Uh, first six. Go ahead, I'm sorry. He who says he abides in him is himself also obligated to walk exactly as he walked. Are you walking like the Mashiach walked when he was here on earth? That's for you to judge yourself with. Let's go to first Peter or Kephel. First Kephel one, that's Peter verse 17. Again, you gotta be in you gotta be in tune and tied into this. Into this truth of, of the blood, right? When, when, when I read the opening scriptures in Exodus 24, hey, the blood was sprinkled on the on the on the Torah and the people for atonement and redemption, right? But that's what Yahushua is doing for us now with the process of his death and resurrection to atone us back to the Creator, Yahuwah, right? First chapter 1, 17. Can you get there? Go ahead. Verse 17. Uh-huh. And if you call on the Father. Who without respect of person judges according to each man's work, conduct yourselves throughout your the time of your sojourning here in reverence, uh -huh. knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things such as silver or gold from your idolatrous way of life handed down to you by traditions from your forefathers. But but with the precious blood of Mashiach, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, uh -huh. who truly was foreordained before the foundation of the world. But was manifest in these last times for you. Hey, remember this, understand this. He wasn't foreordained because he sat at the right hand of the Father in the beginning. He was the plan of Yahuwah that was spoken through law and prophets that uh, Mo, uh, uh, Moshe, I will raise a prophet like unto you from among your brethren. How did he get here? With a mother and a father, a father and a mother. They had sex, they conceived, and Yahuwah ordained that conception and said that this child being born shall be called the son of the highest, the son of Yahuwah, and you shall call his name Yahusha, which is Yahuwah in salvation. So you need to understand, don't worship the sacrifice, worship Yahuwah, the king of hosts, and stop calling him God Elohim. But that's not what he is, brothers and sisters. He's the creator, the mighty father, the king of glory, the king of hosts. Right? Let's go a little further. Let's go back to 1 Yachanah chapter 5. 1 Yachanah chapter 5. Uh, I'm sorry, chapter 1, verse 5. When you get there, go ahead. 1 Yachanah uh, 1, chapter 5. All right, go ahead. Verse 5. This is the message which we have heard from him and declared to you that you who is like. And in him is no darkness, evil, falsehood, or deception at all. Uh -huh. If we say that we have fellowship with him, but walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. Uh -huh. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Yahushua Mashiach, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Oh, wash me, Yahushua, from all my past sins. Set me a clean slate before Yahuwah, because that's Yahuwah's will for me to get a clean slate so that I will also be accepted into his kingdom, which is going to be here on earth. All right, go ahead, huh? Verse 8. Uh -huh. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. So if you ain't got no law, you say, well, I ain't got no sin because there's no law. You, you fooling yourself. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Uh -huh. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his law is not in us. Hey, don't make Yahuwah a liar. We said, thou should not bear false witness, and you lie, bear false witness. You're in trouble, right? Let's go to Malathiah chapter 19. Let's see if Yahusha is saying, worship me, or worship Yahuwah, the king of hosts, right? 
So, Malachi uh, chapter 19, verse 16. Ah, when you get there, go ahead. Verse 16. Uh -huh. And behold, one came to him and said, Teacher, what righteous thing may I do so that, that I may inherit eternal life? What's on the table? Eternal life. Right? Go ahead. But he said to him, why do you question me about righteousness? Uh -huh. There is only one who is the standard of perfection, and that is Yahuwah. Hey, why are you sitting here giving me the accolades and the glory of being righteous? There's only one that is the standard of perfection of righteousness, and that's the king of hosts, Yahuwah. Worship Yahuwah and not the sacrifice, brothers and sisters. How do you worship Yahuwah? Through his law, by the teachings of the Hamashiach, Yahusha. Mm -hmm. Understanding what the sacrifice is set up for, an atonement for sin, to be reconciled and redeemed back to the Father by the washing of the word, right? That's what we're talking about. So he says, hey, why do you question me about righteousness? There is only one who is a standard of perfection, and that is Yahuwah, so what? So if you would enter into life, keep the laws of Yahuwah. So if you would receive Yahuwah's salvation, Worship Yahuwah, the King of hosts, through his law, by the redemption of my blood given upon you to wash you from all your sins, so you can say, I want to be cleansed and walk before Yahuwah in harmony with a contrite heart, a humble spirit, to be meek, to inherit the earth, brothers and sisters. Simple as that, right? Two more places. Let's go to uh, Psalms 93. Psalms 93, we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Did you get that? Go ahead. Verse 1. Uh-huh. Yahuwah reigns. You clothe yourself with majesty. You, O oh Yahuwah, our Father, robe yourself with strength. Uh-huh. You put it on. Uh -huh. The world also is established. It cannot be moved. Right. Your throne was established of old, and you are from everlasting. Hey, his throne was established from old, from everlasting to everlasting. There will be no throne higher than his throne. So don't take the sacrifice who told you to worship Yahuwah and make him the ultimate power and put his throne above the Father. Because remember in Revelation, it says that he was caught up to the throne of Yahuwah until Yahuwah says, go back, we'll make your enemies your footstool, mm -hmm. and you shall sit on Dawood's throne in the earth. Because he said, all power is given to you on the planet. Well, up here, hey, it's all Yahuwah's power and glory. So when Yahusha was got getting from Yahuwah, we got to honor that because he's the ultimate teacher. But who he's teaching? Yahuwah, king of hosts. Worship Yahuwah. Bow down to Yahuwah, not the sacrifice, brothers and sisters. One more place. Revelation 3. We're going to read verse 21. Revelation 3, verse 21. And when you get there, uh, go ahead. Verse 21. Uh-huh. To him who overcomes... I will grant to sit with me on my throne. So he got a throne. Where his throne going to be at? Here on earth. His throne is not in heaven. He's sitting next to the Father in heaven or Shema, waiting to come down and sit on his throne for the millennium period. And then give the world over to the Father to where the Father would have it all as he had in the beginning. For I align by he forever and ever. So he says that to him who overcomes sin in the earth, the devil who is God, I will grant to sit with me here on earth on my throne. Go ahead. As I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. As he overcame and is sitting with the father at the right hand, the king of glory, the king of hosts, Yahuwah, brothers and sisters. So worship Yahuwah of hosts, not the sacrifice. With that, of course, we got some understanding of Yahusha's name. Hallelujah, Yahuwah. Shalom, shalom, family.